In the second part tutorial of Johnny Harris video, we're picking up right where we left off. I'll walk you through how I edited the rest of the scene, from clip 8 to 18, and show you the final steps that pull everything together. This is where the edit really starts to take shape with transitions, overlays, color grading, and textures that give the scene its polished, cinematic feel. So, stick around till the end to see how it all comes together. If you haven't watched part 1 yet, I recommend you to watch it first so everything in this video makes sense to you. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more tutorials and join my Patreon to get all the assets and, and project files from my tutorials. You can also ask me about editing stuff in the community chat. Check out the link in the description. Now, let's start the tutorial. Since all the assets needed for this clip are the same as in clip 6, we can simply copy and paste them. The only things I will change here are the photo of the character and its placement. Next, we continue with clip 9. First, I will extend the duration of this white background. Then, I'll add this black background as a layer on top of it to create a film-like shape. After that, I will add a map of Iran and crop it using the masking tool. Don't forget to adjust the round corner settings as well. Then, go to adjustments and set the saturation to the lowest level. Now, I will apply the same steps to the character's photo. To speed up the process, we can copy and paste the attributes from the previous photo like this. Now, we just need to adjust the mask size. After that, position the photo here and adjust the scale accordingly. Now, I will select all layers in this clip. Then, split them at this point and shift them forward a few seconds to make space for clip 11, leaving a gap in the middle for clip 10. Now, let's extend the duration of the map from clip 9, then split it again and adjust its scale until the map covers the entire frame. For clip 11, we just need to reposition all the assets that we cut from clip 9. First, import the photo of the character, then flip it and crop it using the mask. Now adjust the scale, position, and rotation. Next I will add this red circle and start animating it using the masking tool. First, cut the circle in half using split mask. Then, duplicate the layer and click reverse. Now compound each layer separately. Then, select split again for the first half circle layer and rotate it minus 90 degrees. Add a keyframe on rotation. Move forward a few seconds and adjust the rotation so the half circle reappears. Now, select the other half circle layer and repeat the same steps to continue the motion. Now, 
so it's going to look like this. Once done, select both circle layers, compound them, and change the blend mode to multiply. Now, you just need to adjust the scale and position. For now, I'll place it here because I'll be adding more assets to this clip. I will also add this arrow, which I will animate using the masking tool. Go to Mask, select Split, then rotate it minus 90 degrees. Move the mask to the left, add a keyframe on the mask. Move forward a few seconds, then move the mask to the right. Now compound the layer. Change the blend mode to multiply. Now, as you can see in the original video, the background also includes a film roll, which is quite difficult to find. So, I will improvise by creating one myself, and it's actually not that hard. All you need to do is add some text to resemble a film roll. I will also reuse the arrow, but change its color to white by adjusting the black and white settings. Now, I will shift all the assets to make space for one more photo. Finally, select all layers and compound them. What I'll do here is create a zoom out effect at the beginning of the clip. First increase the scale and position it on the first photo. Move forward a few seconds, then add a keyframe. Move forward a few more seconds, then reduce the scale. Now, you just need to set all the keyframe curves to ease. Now, let's move on to clip 13, where we will create another map animation. This time, the process will be easier since we already have the edited map components from the previous clips. So here, we just need to copy and paste them and reposition them accordingly. Let's start with the map. Next, I'll add this photo. I'll also copy the line animation and then compound the layer. Now, let's scale down the photo and reposition both the line animation and the photo. For clip 14, I'll start by copying the crossing line animation we created for the previous map, then, I'll place it right before the red line reaches the location. Now, position the playhead on the first frame of the crossing line animation, select all layers, and press crest trail plus B to split them. Now, enlarge the scale of all these assets. Next, add a blur effect. 
select and place this layer below the photo layer. Then adjust the intensity. Then, select all these layers and compound them. I also think I'll compound all the layers in this clip as well. Now, let's create the camera movement. First, add a keyframe here. Then move forward a few seconds and adjust the scale and position. Then, smooth out the motion. Now I'll add another blur effect right above this compound layer. Adjust the intensity, add a keyframe. Move forward a few seconds and set the intensity to 0% and this is the result. Now, let's move on to clip 15. This is just like some of the previous clips. We only need to adjust the placement slightly. Now, trim all assets except for this character photo, then split the photo layer. I'll enlarge this part of the photo layer until it fills the entire frame. Now, let's move on to clip 17. In this clip, I'll place two photos of the characters, each with a black stroke. After it finished, you just have to compound all the layers in this clip except for the white background. Now I'm gonna make a zoom in movement using keyframes first. Add keyframe in the first frame then go to the end of the frame and upscale it a little bit. Now, let's move on to the final clip. First I'll add this memo, then, change its blend mode to multiply. Next, I'll scale up this memo to 1000%. Now position the memo and make sure that the words that you want highlight are in the center of the frame. Now let's make an in animation for this memo. Add two keyframes at this point. For the first keyframe, position the memo at the very bottom so that all the text disappears. So it's gonna look like this. Don't forget to smooth out the motion again. Then, I'll compound this layer to add a motion blur effect to its movement. We can adjust the blur intensity as needed. Now, let's open the compound clip. What I'll do here is make all the words, except for the highlighted ones, fade out slightly. First, I'll add a text layer here. Then, I'll type out the words I want to highlight using the same font. In this case, the font used is Times New Roman. After that, select the memo, add a keyframe to the opacity. Move forward a few seconds and slightly reduce the opacity. For the text layer, I'll add a fade in animation. Now it looks like this. Additionally, I'll also add a highlighter animation using this yellow line asset I've created. Now, I just need to adjust the scale so that the yellow line completely covers the highlighted words. Then, change the blend mode to multiply. Now, we just need to animate it using the masking tool. Go to mask, select split. Rotate the mask to minus 90 degrees and shift it to the left until it disappears. Add a keyframe. Move forward a few seconds. Then shift the mask to the right until the entire highlight appears. We can also smooth out the motion. And here is the result. Now it's time to add transitions to each clip. This process is very easy since I will be using all the built-in transitions available in CapCut. Let's start with this clip. First, I'll align this map animation clip with this photo clip. Then, I'll extend the duration of the white background. Now, select all layers for this photo clip and compound them. Next, I'll apply the right transition. For this one, I use right transition, so it's gonna look like this. Now, I'll compound this clip. Then, I will add pull-in transition.
After that, I'll compound all these clips together. Now add down transition in between these two clips. Now let's bring down this clip to align with other clips. Also, I'm gonna compound all the layers of the next clip. Before moving to the next clip, I'll add a slight side movement using keyframes. Once that's done, I'll apply the left transition. For this next clip, I'll also use the left transition. Now, for these last two clips, I'm gonna add up transition. After this process, we'll move on to the next step. First, I'll add an adjustment layer to the timeline. Then, I'll adjust the temperature to give it a slightly warm, yellowish tone. After that, I'll add this grunge texture. Now, change the blend mode to multiply. Next, go to adjustments and increase the exposure to the maximum setting. Now, I'll add a zoom out effect at the beginning of the texture. I'll add two keyframes here. For the first keyframe, I'll scale it up. Then, I'll smooth out the motion. Here's the result. For the final touch, I'll add a film dust overlay. Then, change the blend mode to screen. Lastly, I'll lower the opacity slightly. And that's how you create documentary edit like Johnny Harris in CapCut. Leave a like if this video helped you. Thank you guys for watching and also thanks to my patron for always supporting this channel. If you want to join you can check the link in the description. And by doing so, you just support me to keep making this kind of tutorial and keep constant on YouTube. And here is the final result. In the summer of 2002, the director of the British intelligence agency MI6, Richard Dearlove, traveled to Washington, D.C. to meet with the director of the CIA, George Tenet. The topic of the meeting was Iraq and its leader, Saddam Hussein. In the meeting, the CIA director shared classified information with his British counterpart, who then traveled back to London to 10 Downing Street, the home of the prime minister, Tony Blair. Dearlove told his Prime Minister everything about what was really happening behind the scenes in the United States. How the U.S. was planning to invade.